Welcome to Jewish Life, a program presented in cooperation with the Jewish Community Relations Council of New York. I'm your host, Stuart Ain. Every week we present programs of particular interest to the Jewish community. Today we'd like to welcome back an old friend, uh, an old friend. <laughs> We've known each other many years, Mordechai Kedar. He is a lecturer at Bar Ilan University, an expert in Arab culture and Arab affairs, and now Vice President of Newsreel. Um, welcome to the program. It's good to have you back. Thank you so much, Stuart, for having me here. Right. Tell me about Newsreel. Newsreel is this app uh, for both Android and uh, the, the iPhone, iPhone. Uh, which uh, to, to some people reminds of Facebook uh, because of its layout. But we are a content supplier, uh, totally free, 24 on 7, about Israel and about the Middle East. And, uh, our, and we do have an agenda, uh, means that we are not part of bashing Israel and claiming that Israel is in charge of all the problems in the world. We are conservative uh, and we are pro-Israel. Yet we are, uh, we are committed to truth and to uh, uh, serious analysis. Uh, so, and we have many uh, content contributors. And I think it's one of the best, if not the best uh, supplier for uh, information and analysis about Israel and the Middle East. Also breaking news, something going on. We have, we have also breaking news, we have many things. And I highly recommend to everybody to download for free. Uh, from the App Store to download Newsrael, N-E-W-S-R-A-E-L, Newsrael, and uh, to use it on a daily basis. It will give you good, good information and uh, serious analysis. Right, right. Very good, very good. And um, tell me, as uh, re we're recording this in the middle of uh, June 2022, and um, we see that the Biden administration which at first said that it wanted nothing to do with Saudi Arabia and was um, uh, very upset with what the Saudis were doing in terms of human rights. Uh, now we have the Biden administration uh, changing its tune and uh, Biden is gonna be visiting uh, the Middle East in, in mid July and uh, is going to Saudi Arabia. And, um, and people have said that his foreign policy is, with respect to the Middle East seems to be much of the same as uh, President Trump uh, with his ideas. Can you address that? Well, <laughs> don't forget that the, what we began with when Biden came to the White House, uh, what directed him, in my humble view, is ideology. Ideology of human rights, of political freedoms, of all these things. Uh, little by little, he understood that the reality uh, is sometimes more powerful than ideology. In a way or another, you have to relate to the issues on the ground. You cannot ignore totally what happens in the world. And now, because of, maybe because of the war between Russia and the Ukraine and the balagan, the chaos in some markets, including the energy market, and the food market and many other things. Uh, now he has to recalculate his route, maybe leave some ideologic uh, points, which he, I think he still believed in them. Yet he has to do something on the ground. Otherwise the prices of oil in, in, in the pump here in the United States uh, might rocket up to a degree that he will not be, um, that the Democratic Party will not be re-elected in, yes. uh, in the forthcoming election, mid-term mid elections. So, yes. uh, and don't forget that when it comes to Saudi Arabia, uh, we expected to hear the squad against any relations with Saudi Arabia. It's Ilhan Omar and Rashid Atalaev and all this because they are over, uh, overwhelmingly against Saudi Arabia uh, because they are Muslim Brotherhood, in my humble view. So, uh, and now you don't hear them. Apparently the party told them, 
hey uh, guys or hey uh, ladies, uh, please uh, calm it down. We cannot, uh, you know, continue with this ideologic ideologous uh, line. Uh, we have to also to be connected to the reality. Yes, in fact, uh, the Biden administration even is looking the other way when it comes to Iran and Iran shipment of uh, oil, uh, which is remember they had all kinds of restrictions on Iran, and uh, uh, now they're looking the other way. I'm hearing. Yeah, so this is why I think now many things uh, might change. Uh, so it looks to some as something which uh, looks like the Trump administration's policies. Look, what I can say about Trump administration policies is they, they were very much connected to the reality. And now since uh, Biden adopts more realistic policies, it might look like more or less the policies of Trump because both are connected or all of a sudden both are connected to, uh, to the reality. Yes, so in fact, um, uh, Mahmoud Abbas uh, of the PA, Palestinian Authority, was uh, calling for the US to open up a, a consulate or something in East Jerusalem. They wanted to have a our presidents in East Jerusalem, and Biden said, okay, he would do it. And Israel said, we don't want it. And I don't think it's gonna, at least it hasn't happened yet. And uh, I'm not sure, what do you think? I think that it will not happen because just like, uh, imagine that Israel opens a consulate for Cuba in, the, in, in Washington DC or to Venezuela or, or to Russia or to China. This is the same thing. The PA is the vile enemy of the state of Israel. They appear to have peace with us, but they were never, so far, never agreed to accept Israel as a state of the Jews or a Jewish state. They never agreed to this. And opening a, a, a consulate in Jerusalem means that Jerusalem will be their capital. Excuse me? Will uh, Washington DC will ever be a capital of another state? Why should Jerusalem become a capital of another state? Only because some Arabs or Muslims want it? They want many things. They want Paris, Paris as well. They want London as well. So what? Should they become also Islamic uh, state, cities? Only because some Muslims want it? So this is what I'm, I, I, and I think that the Biden administration finally uh, understood that uh, you cannot do such a thing, especially to a friendly country like the state of Israel. So uh, look, the one who, who, who ruled, uh, who managed the, the relations with the Palestinians was a guy named Hadi Amr uh, in, in the State Department or in other parts of the administration. Hadi Amr is a vile enemy of Israel for many years since he was an activist in Georgetown University, as much as I remember. Okay, so to, to allow such a man to run the relations between Israel and the United States is uh, something which is totally uh, unacceptable, especially by Israel. And he pushes, of course, to extract Jerusalem from Israel and to, and to uh, establish a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital not side by side with Israel, but on the ruins of Israel. And that's why I, I want to show you something which will actually demonstrate the whole thing. Uh, this is a scarf which Palestinians go around in, uh, in demonstrations. And this is the Palestinian flag. On one side, they say Jerusalem is ours, Al-Quds Lana in Arabic. And they show here the Temple Mount. It means the, the Mikdash, the temple. Okay, and the other side, they show Palestine, Palestine, from the river to the sea. Palestine will be, will be free. Okay, and this is the PA. This is the PLO. Our and that's the map of Israel. That's the, the map, map of, of, of entire Israel. So where is Israel? If this is Palestine, means Palestine. So where is where, so where is Israel in the sea? And where are we? Israel is within the fish or the sharks. So. What, what I'm saying is 
is the PA explicitly and clearly wants to build itself as a state on the ruins of the state of Israel. And of course, the, at that time, Jerusalem uh, uh, will be their capital. How, how do I know? They show it. On one side, it's Jerusalem. On the other side, it's the whole land. And the connection is very clear. Without Zion, means Jerusalem, without Zion, there is no Zionism. Right. And they want to nullify everything which Zionism achieved through the last 125 years. And this is why uh, they insist on having Jerusalem. And unfortunately, some people in the American administration would give it to them. Now, during the May 29th uh, Israeli celebrations to mark 55 years since the 1967 reunification of Jerusalem, the Palestinian Authority tried to incite widespread violence and um, it didn't happen, it didn't happen. So failing that, um, they resorted to anti-Semitic uh, hate speech, calling Israeli marchers inferior settlers, monkeys, and fools. That means the, the Palestinians themselves are not interested in listening to what the PA is saying. They don't really represent uh, the Palestinian people. Look, many in the Palestinian Authority uh, I would say even vast majority of them are totally against the PA. Don't forget that the PA was created by Israel in 1993, 1994. This is why from the beginning, the genes by which the PA was designed are, are Zionist genes. So it is totally rejected. Secondly, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the leader of the PA, is not from Judea and Samaria. He is from the Galilee, from Tzfat. So he is, as we say in Yiddish, nicht kanun zarel, not one of us. So they don't want him, they reject him because he's not one of them. Thirdly, as you know, the PA today is deeply divided between Hamas and the PA. The PA are on a sharp decline while Hamas actually increase their power every, every, uh, every day. Uh, and don't forget that Hamas have already won the elections to the Legislative Council of the Palestinians in January of, nine, of 2006. Means already, what, 16 years since Hamas took over the Palestinian parliament and until this very day, it has not changed because there were no elections since then. Yes, so, because Abbas, didn't, Abbas thought he would lose. So he didn't want to He didn't want to hold the elections. He the scheduled loser. them a couple of times, I think, but then they were canceled when he saw that the polls were saying of Hamas course. was going to win. Of course, because elections in the Arab world are only a game uh, which some people play in order to convince others. And the game will be, will be only as long as the game plays to, to the hands of those who who, want, who are managing it. Uh, Hamas, by the way, took Gaza over uh, exactly 15 years ago. It was in mid-June of 2007. And uh, since then, they have a state, a functioning state in Gaza. They have their borders, they have judicial system, they have military uh, uh, system, they have military industry, they know how to, how to produce uh, the missiles, they have Ministry of Health and Ministry of Education, and every, every organ of a state Hamas has in Gaza. And Gaza as a state functions way much better than Syria, than Iraq, uh, Sudan, uh, 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 Yemen, Libya. So they have a state. And but I'm not quite a... sure. I'm not quite sure. I'm, I just saw something recently on Newsreel, an Arab re report showed actually you had video of this Arab resident of Gaza. He goes to the balcony of his home and he shouts to passers by in Arabic. And the translation is, oh world, save us, we must eat. And uh, meanwhile, 
Hamas, instead of using the donations it gets uh, from other countries uh, to help residents, it, it simply uses it to buy more weapons. And Qatar has been uh, its, bigger, its biggest financial supporter. Well, uh, because Qatar can. They, they, they do what yes. they can. Qatar is a big supporter of every terror organization. And of course, uh, Hamas included. And because uh, Qatar is uh, wholeheartedly with the Muslim Brotherhood uh, organization and the offshoots of the Muslim Brotherhood like Hamas and other terror organizations. And unfortunately, Qatar is viewed as a normal country, although they are in bed with the Iranians on one side, and in the other bed they are with the Muslim Brotherhood, which is the, the school of thought of all the Sunni uh, uh, terror organizations. And Qatar has the license to do it because the whole world actually uh, dances according to the music which, which Qatar plays because people need the money from Qatar and Qatar buys people. Look, in some months, Qatar will host the uh, international game, the game, the, the soccer games or, or the uh, another uh, uh, sport event. Uh, this was bought by money. They bribed and, go, and guess who's going? Israel is. Israel's going. <laughs> of course, because look, Israel, Israel goes not because of its Qatar. Israel goes every, wherever it is. But what I'm saying is, is, is Qatar is hosting it by bribery, which they bribed the, the headquarters of the, or the board of the soccer games, the, the global board. So uh, uh, Qatar bribes everyone. Pa Qatar buys people. And with its channel Al Jazeera, they, uh, in, in all the forms of Al Jazeera, in English, in Arabic, in many others, they are uh, disseminating their ideology all over the world. So, but um, a, a, a number of people were surprised that Qatar actually said to Israel, you can come and, and your players can, can play. Um, and, and there have been some um, outreach or by the government in Israel toward Qatar. In fact, I believe, um, didn't Gantz uh, suggest to Qatar that it cut back on the anti-Israel rhetoric uh, from Al Jazeera? There are all kinds of talks between Qatar and Israel behind the scenes. Yes. Yet so far it led to nowhere because- Well, except the invitation to the players to come. The, the invitation is compulsory because uh, they, they remember what happened recently. I forgot the, the place which didn't invite the Israelis. So the games were canceled. Oh, I see. Because the world cannot uh, tolerate such a thing. And they understood that if they boycott Israel, uh, the games will, will just not be there. So uh, what, what, I, what I mean that uh, Qatar succeeded to convince too many people in the world, especially in the West, of course, by its money, uh, to accept Qatar, although the behavior of Qatar in many cases and in, 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 in many arenas is devastating, is dreadful is harming the whole world. And they're, they're actually uh, uh, in bed with the Iranians. And, and, and this coalition between Qatar and Iran should have been denounced all over the world. But, you know, the world is taking advantage of, of the money and they actually take advantage of their own money. And, uh, and the fact that they are one of the three major suppliers of natural gas in the world. Uh, Qatar, the whole market is Qatar, and uh, Iran and uh, Russia. Now Israel gets into this market a little bit because of what we have in, under the sea. But Israel is a very, very uh, small player in this game. Well, speaking of natural gas now, uh, as you say, Israel is a player in the game. And now there's a problem with Lebanon and um, the the uh, the oil fields, the gas fields, um, uh, are right on top of each other. 
the United States tried to delineate the areas where the two countries could uh, uh, operate. And uh, now uh, there's a question that because a, a, a rig just moved in and now Lebanon is saying, no, you can't use that area. And they've asked the United States to intercede uh, as of mid-June uh, in 2022. Um, how do you see this playing out? We don't see a war here, do we? we? We don't see a war only as long as Israel is viewed as a country which is very dangerous to mess with. And as you know, peace in the Middle East means ceasefire. And ceasefire is achieved only when one side understands that the other side is too dangerous. And this is what peace means in the Middle East. Israel will be granted peace uh, only uh, when Israel will be viewed as a state which nobody uh, uh, dares to mess with. And in, it, it includes Hezbollah, it includes everything. And once Israel proves to everybody that it's too dangerous to mess with Israel, everything will be much, much easier and the agreements about gas and about many other things will be much easier to be achieved. When other countries in the, in, in the Middle East, like Hezbollah, Hezbollah state, which is uh, Li Lebanon. Once it was Lebanon, today is Hezbollah Stan. Uh, 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 once the governors, no, the governor, uh, 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 the singular, uh, his name is Hassan Nasrallah, the leader, no, the, the, the ruler of Hezbollah Stan, oh. when he understands that Israel is too dangerous to, to mess with, everything will be much easier to achieve an, an agreement. Well, um, just uh, today, in fact, the uh, Israeli, uh, a top Israeli uh, military man uh, just went on television and, and warned Lebanon uh, that if there is war, uh, you will suffer a heavy price and um, the country would be destroyed. Not only, he said, uh, uh, the homes where uh, rockets are stored, but uh, buildings and everything is going to be wiped out because they have many, many, many uh, missiles in in uh, in Lebanon, just you know, aimed at Israel. Um, but Lebanon, but the um, the Iranians have been trying to send uh, more equipment to Lebanon to make those missiles uh, more accurate, uh, guided missiles, um, and, and so. Uh, that's another issue I want to get into about uh, Syria and how Syria is being Look, used. What happened in Lebanon is that with many, so for many years, Hezbollah are building uh, um, apartment buildings and the sellers in these buildings are storages of missiles, assuming that Israel will refrain from bombing an apartment building of course, with people in it, uh, bec only, bec only to get rid of uh, missiles under the building. Uh, somebody tipped me that uh, Israel has all kinds of bombs which can devastate the whole cellar without uh, collapsing the, the, building. the building. So, uh, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but if, if this is true, Israel can, and, and Israel knows about those buildings. And in, in, a, in one case, at least, the whole neighborhood was built on a giant storage of missiles instead of a parking lot. <laughs> they have a parking lot for missiles. So uh, this, is, uh, this is what happened. Whether Israel has such a thing or not, I have no idea, but who knows? Because look, when all these missiles a blow up uh, under a building, I would not like to be in that building. Right. Well, you saw what happened in Gaza when oh. Israel, they, they warned, they told the people get out and they sent flyers down and you have so many minutes to get out of the building. And when the building was evacuated, then they took down the building. Right. Right. So uh, uh, apparently this is what will be with, with Lebanon. We have nothing against the Lebanese people. But we, we are uh, <laughs> trying to fight in a way or another. 
uh, this terror organization which took Lebanon over, uh, Hezbollah. But here I must uh, remind those who at least read, uh, read Hebrew and read Haaretz. I published in Haaretz in June 1st, 2000, means 22 years ago and more, an article under the title, and the next ruler is Hassan Nasrallah. Means Hassan Nasrallah will take Lebanon over. 22 years ago, it was not yet clear what people see today. But I saw it already 22 years ago, how the man actually is on its way to take Lebanon over altogether. But that, that is an, he's said to be an Iranian puppet that Iran is calling the shots. Yet we've seen instances where he tells Iran, I'm not doing uh, your bidding. Uh, am I right? He is not, and he was not a puppet of Iran. Definitely Iran supported him, just like Israel is not a puppet of the United States of America, as some countries or as some people try to, uh, to uh, show Israel as if it is a puppet of America. No, uh, Israel has its own policies. And when the Israelis policies uh, are not going along with the American ones, so uh, Israel stands firmly against the American administration, whether it is uh, this one or the former one. So uh, the, same is, the same thing is with, uh, with Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a, is a Lebanese organization, of course, supported by Iran, with deep connections with Iran, no doubt, yet, they work according to the, their own interests, which in many cases coincide with the, uh, go along with, go along with the interests of, uh, of, uh, of Iran. Right, yes, yes. So um, if there is a, um, some military action against Iran, would you guess that Hezbollah will um, get involved? I think so, yes, because this is actually the reason why Iran supplied uh, uh, Hezbollah and Hamas, by the way, uh, with such a quantity of uh, missiles in order to use them in the D-date. The D-date is the war which apparently will erupt at some point between Israel and Iran. Right. And Iran is the, the big... Uh, um, Unknown factor here. Um, it's continuing to develop its its uh, uh, apparently cool quest for nuclear weapons. We have only a minute left, so yeah. I, I don't want to get into the, too the much. Nuclear, of that. The but, nuclear yes. weapons are, are are very very worrisome, but we have another thing which people do not uh, do not pay any attention to the empire which Iran has already built in the Middle East by annexing. Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, and Gaza under its uh, hegemony. And this is even before they have nuclear weapons. Imagine what will happen uh, if they succeed to acquire nuclear weapons. So this is uh, something which also the world should have been seen, should have, should have, should have seen uh, the, the empire which Iran built uh, using the dysfunctional countries of the Middle East, uh, like Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. Great. Well, listen, this has been a fast half hour. Um, I appreciate it. Mordechai Kadar, he's a lecturer at uh, Bar Ilan University and an expert in Arab affairs. Thanks so much. My name is Stuart Ain. This has been Jewish Life. Until next week, have a good one.